Good evening and welcome to this edition of News Night. My name is Charles Odongtho, and with me in the studio, as usual, is old man of the clan, Andrew Mwenda. He is the CEO of the Independent Magazine. Andrew, you're most welcome this evening. Thank you very much, Charles. Now, this evening, we are going to take a look at the exchanges between Mbavazi, Jacqueline, and General Kaihura. Andrew, you have been reading these exchanges between these two people. One a politician, one not a politician. What do you make of it? What's happening? You're calling them exchanges. Kahura hasn't really said much about her. He responded and denied yes. what she was saying. Exactly. But he was not saying things against her. I, I think, first of all, when I read Jacqueline's interview, I was in many ways intrigued. Why? If I was Jacqueline, my husband is a prime minister, and I am the chairperson of the Women's League of the Ruling Party. I will know that the, we may have differences internal in the government, but they must not be marketed. Uh, you don't wash your dirty linen in public. You see, if me and my wife had a problem at home, mm. we don't go and see a name to resolve it. We must resolve it internally. But I don't if you're over scratching the woman's face. Because you see, ultimately, I think that she has undermined her mama's position further. How? Because I think her mama has played you see, there has been very unfair uh, attacks, I would say, on Mbabazi. Or if, uh, and, and, and Mbabazi has acted in uh, what I thought he would do. Because Mbabazi is a highly sophisticated person, he's very stable emotionally. You, you cannot stampede him into a quarrel. Mm -hmm. So Mbabazi is not, you have seen what Bukenya has done. He has written an article attacking you. You see, Bukenya was that kind of cheap politician. So any other person would have been in the media writing and arguing and attacking others, colleagues in the government and things like that. He has acted as a true leader by keeping out of the public fray and saying if there's a problem within NRM mm. and within the government, it must be resolved internally. Yeah. If you're a senior person in the government, she may not be having an official government job, but she's a wife the of, uh, of the prime of minister party, yeah. and she's a senior leader in the party. She sits in sec. These are issues at the government level that they need to resolve. So I personally find it weak leadership quality and ability for you to come out and give a newspaper an interview um, uh, washing your data linen in public. Can I, I, just, tell can I just uh, bring mm. in this uh, line of thinking? People may, s may say, is Jacqueline really speaking her own mind or speaking for someone who is being pressed in the name of the Prime Minister Mama Mbabazi? The, I cannot claim to know Mbabazi very well, although I can say that I have known him for many years now about to 18 years, since 1996-97, when I first met him. I don't think it's Mbabazi encouraging her to say these things. I know that Jacqueline is a very strong lady. She's very passionate. In her own right. She's very passionate. She's very strong-willed. And if she feels something, she's likely to do it without seeking Mbabazi's support. In fact, most people think, and I think State House also believes, that she is Mbabazi's spokesperson. I actually don't think so. I think that Jacqueline is Jacqueline's spokesperson. These things she's saying, uh, not about, it is even possible that Mbabazi maybe does not approve of them. But she's a very strong person and I don't think she, he, can, uh, he can whip her into silence. So let's come to the real issue that she raises. She mm. refers to General Kaihura as a fully fledged party functionary, that Kaihura is not professional in running the police force in this country, mm. that Kaihura is 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 forging a number of cases charges against the youth mm. you talked about this and you talked about so a, you know a plethora of documents and information that was brought to you and mm. some of them you have not yet published in your paper because mm. is that a lie or is there some truth in it let you have asked me two questions so the first question is that kaihura is not being an independent igp he Doing is acting as a, an a, as an appendage of the party first you see, Kaihura is from the NRM. Wasn't he in the bush? Yes, he was. NRM, NRA, National NRA, Political, National Political uh, Comms of the, for the Army. So, yeah. I don't think that the NRM has separated itself as a political party from the state. And that the Army is separate from the NRM. They are still fused. With the time, of course, I am sure when Museven leaves power, whether Museven will have to leave power, whether by death or by election yeah. or by retirement, sure. at one point will leave power. Yeah. There will be a process through which I think there will be a depersonalization. When M7 leaves the stage, there will be a depersonalization of the army because right now the army is personalized. M7 has personal control over it. So it's difficult to construct right now a national non-partisan army 
and non personal is and when Museveni is there because Museveni started with 27 or 41 people and has constructed it up to now. Mm. Those Ugandans who hope that you can end that kind of legacy when Museveni is still president uh, is wishful thinking. So now I want to be realistic. Kaihura is from that stable. And Kaihura, I think, feels that he, his loyalty is largely to the person who recruited him as a student, put him in the army, and up to now who has. So I can understand Kaihura that way. To that degree, I think that the Kaihura's genius was to define his mission as head of the police, hmm? as an instrument of protecting Museveni's power. Mm. But people miss that, that by Kaihura showing that, using, trying to use the police to protect Museveni's power, he has been able to negotiate for resources from the state to improve the ability of the police to be able to perform its other functions like criminal investigations, like uh, traffic policing, like forensic uh, investigations. Now you can see they're setting up a cancer institute. Kaihura has been the most transformative lead of the Uganda police ever. And I realize that there is always these two conflicting things, that his success in so many other aspects of improving police welfare, you can see they are well dressed, they are well, uh, uh, they is improving their welfare, they are well resourced. Kaihura found them when they had only four pickups for the whole of the Boka Bini pickups for the whole of Kampala. Mm -hmm. Now they have eight for Kampala alone. They have more than 6,500 bikes. They have armored personnel carriers. The total fleet of the police is more than 6,000 vehicles. So the police is heavily resourced right now. So it is able to perform other policing functions, even though, even and that has only been possible because now Museven is not hosted to the police. You see, Museven used to hate the police. He had ensured that it is underfunded. So Kaihura's greatest achievement was to show, demonstrate to Museven that this police force can serve for purposes of regime maintenance. And in exchange, the Ugandans are getting the benefit of a well-resourced police force able to perform its duties. Just can I cut in there with, with, mm. the, with this argument? The fact that, yes, police has been well-resourced, and no doubt about that. Kaihura has been very successful in resource mobilization. But there is the issue of now, you see so many killings, recently mm. of police officers, senior police officers, DPCs and all that, not yet, not yet explained, no investigation coming out to say, mm. who are these killing them? Is it something <laughs> that <laughs> speaks to the failure of police? Then there are these innocent, you know, killings of innocent civilians. By the way, my uncle was killed in November by thugs who, it turns out, that, uh, you know, part of the state, uh, you know, people who mm. are serving in the UPDF. But, you know, this is happening while Many police officers are put to check political leaders like BCJ, like over mm. 20. Is that something that let is me, not let really. Me, let me answer first linked to your, the your second question on Jacqueline. Yeah. She, Jacqueline is complaining that they have arrested NRA mobilizers yes. and there is no clear case exactly. criminal charge. Uh, first, they are charged with corruption. They are charged with corruption. And, they are, and yet they are not public officers. <laughs> and the NRM, which is an interested part, has not complained. By the way, he has been <laughs> invited today to, pol to Parliament, mm. and the MPs were saying, what is the charge? And then I think it was, is it Madame Akulo, mm. who was saying that, that the complainant, in this case, is the state. So people, the MPs are saying, what <laughs> is the complaint of the state? <laughs> <laughs> the state is complaining on behalf of the NRM. So you can clearly see that part of the problem, of course, with this investigation, when I, I read the Jacqueline, I felt she was making a good point. Because if NRM mobilizers even have used the money to bribe some people for political reasons, I don't know, is that the matter of the police? Maybe. I, I know I'm not a, a good lawyer, but I felt that, again, you could clearly see that uh, the NRM and the state are fused. And uh, even the Kaihura, I would have sympathy with him because he's working in an environment where there are no clear distinctions. The president, in his speech to SEC, but also in his speech to the NRM caucus, mm -hmm. did mention that a lot of the activities that have been involved, uh, uh, people, Mbaba's agents have been involved in, were of a criminal nature. He said, first of all, there was ideological disorientation, in introducing clicksism within the party, and he said, yes, and some of these things are of a criminal nature. And I'm sure that Kaihura was speaking it from there. So I do not know if you are a party leader and you go and begin bribing people in order to influence a vote inside the party. Mm -hmm. Is that a crime under Ugandan law? If it's a crime, who is supposed to be the complainant? I, is it the state? Is it the NRM? So she was raising important issues around which we should have a national debate. Now let me come to your issue. Let me tell you, I have a cousin who is a professor at Bremen University mm. in, uh, in Germany. He has been doing a study of the police for six months. He stays in the police posts. He w wakes up in the morning, he goes with policemen to work on the streets with these Germans. Mm. You should see his writings. And his writings show the following things. The Ugandan population 
He has written an article for the Independent about two weeks ago, and he has sent me another article which will come out the week after next week. Uh, 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 next week, the things he shows that the Ugandan public have a high level of confidence in the police. True. The establishment of a in them. oh yes, the establishment of a police post in a given community is an idea of prestige and security. People feel like we are more secure because there is a police post in our community. So that is good, but I do not know, even in the United States, every day you see shootings, every day you mm -hmm. see many things. Mm -hmm. And in every police force, there will be rogue, for, uh, rogue elements. So I don't think that Kaihura, however good he may be, he can eliminate completely rogue agents, police rogue agents, using their uniforms, their guns, their cars to commit many wrongs. In fact, yes, Kaihura has right now set up a department in the police mm -hmm. responsible for policing traffic policemen. Because a traffic police officer doesn't have a driver's license, is driving uh, a, a DMC, a, a car in dangerous mechan mechanical condition. He's chasing you to inspect whether your car is in proper mechanical condition and whether you have a, a driver's license. Do you see that contradiction? And Kahira was saying, look, even uh, citizens should ask the police, first of all, if you are, before you stop me, do you have a, your driver's license? You have been chasing you on a motorbike. So the police themselves must uh, be able to meet the highest standard. But you see, Kahira cannot right now say, cannot stand on te uh, uh, one day and say, let there be a proper police force that is angelic and then it is there. It will be a process of growth. Lastly, Jacqueline mm -hmm. warns of anarchy. Do you think th that is a line that is possible? What no, type I of anarchy I is he talking I about? I think if that is called sensationalization. What, what, what would that anarchy entail? Uh, because I think that the Museven has effective control over the security and military agenda. And any attempt by anyone to destabilize mm. him must be of a civic nature because if you try to, to stimulate anarchy, you are empowering Museven. You say you just tell a message. I say message. You know me, I consider myself a critic of Museven and one of those people who think I should always offer an intellectual vice. You used to or you consider? I consider myself, up to now, mm. a critic of Museveni and I always co believe that I should offer an intellectual voice to challenge a lot of his actions, right? Mm. But I believe we should do it peacefully and in an organized way. But if you want to simulate anarchy, if you want armed rebellion, you ask Bessie, 2001, he was in South Africa, I used to tell him, Bessie, don't attempt armed rebellion. Because even as what says in the government, he said, Uganda, they will arrest us, thinking we are your supporters. So do not undermine the democratic process in Uganda by resort to mm, warfare. Even Jacqueline, should she attempt anarchy, she will simulate, she will instigate Museven to crack down even on those who are not involved in her anarchy. So it is not good to begin talking about anarchy, really. Well, thank you so much, Andrew Mwenda. That was him, the old man of the clan. My name is Charles Odongso, and I get you back to and, the... And I thank you, Charles, for recognizing that I'm an old man of the clan. For the first time... We have never known months. the clan, <laughs> and that is the problem. By the way, there is some <laughs> seven-year-old kid who has said, does it mean him mm. being old man of the clan that is older than even the father? <laughs> we will answer that one of these days. I hand you back to the news.